a planet 120 light years away, just sparked one of the biggest debates in astronomy. Scientists studying K218b detected faint signs of molecules, ones that, on Earth, are mostly made by living organisms. The signals weren't strong, but they were enough to get everyone talking. Could this be a sign of life? Then came the pushback. Other researchers reanalyzed the data and found no clear evidence. What some saw as biosignatures, others interpreted as noise or misidentified signals. Now, K218b sits at the center of a growing scientific debate. It might hold answers, but it's raising even more questions. In this episode, we'll explore what scientists found, why it matters, and where the search for alien life goes from here. The excitement began with a study from Dr. Niku Madhusudan's team at the University of Cambridge. They used NASA's James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, to observe the atmosphere of K218b, a Hoysian world, possibly covered by a deep ocean and wrapped in a hydrogen-rich atmosphere. That alone made it an intriguing target for habitability studies. What caught global attention was the tentative detection of dimethyl sulfide, DMS, and dimethyl disulfide, DMDS, two molecules that, on Earth, are primarily produced by marine microorganisms. If real, their presence could hint at biological activity. Alongside methane and carbon dioxide, the chemical mix in the atmosphere appeared complex, and the researchers described it as suggestive of potential life-related processes. They reported a three sigma significance, meaning there was a low probability that the detection happened by chance, but not enough to be called a discovery. K-year 2-18b orbits in its star's habitable zone where temperatures could allow for liquid water. Combined with its size and atmospheric composition, this made it a strong candidate for further biosignature analysis. Yet, from the beginning, Madhusudan's team cautioned that their findings were preliminary. The data was intriguing, but far from conclusive. What looked like a promising step forward quickly evolved into one of the most scrutinized claims in exoplanet science. Shortly after the April 2025 announcement, other researchers began examining the claims and raised immediate concerns. Chief among them were issues with data quality and modeling assumptions. Dr. Raphael Lukey and Dr. Michael Zhang of the University of Chicago reviewed the full set of JWZST observations. They noted that the spectral data used to identify DMS was affected by noise, variations in light that can obscure or mimic chemical signatures. This is a known challenge in exoplanet spectroscopy, where distinguishing molecules requires exceptionally clean signals. Luke and Zhang combined all available JWST datasets and applied broader atmospheric models. What they found didn't support the original DMS detection. Instead, they saw signals more consistent with ethane, a molecule that can form through non-biological processes. At Arizona State University, Dr. Lewis Wellbanks and Dr. Matt Nixon also investigated the methodology. They argued that the original study only tested one molecule at a time against a limited baseline model, giving each molecule a built-in statistical advantage. When their team introduced a more comprehensive model, allowing for over 650 molecules, the DMS signals disappeared entirely. Their critique wasn't just about the molecules, it was about how science needs to test multiple hypotheses simultaneously to avoid reaching biased conclusions. In their view, the original team's framework unintentionally overemphasized DMS by not adequately testing for alternative explanations. To Madhusudan's credit, he welcomed the discussion and acknowledged the limitations of his study. He emphasized that the evidence was not definitive and that stronger confirmation would require deeper analysis. His team followed up with an expanded chemical model that still included DMS as a candidate, but was framed more cautiously. The scientific back and forth is not unusual. In fact, it's a sign of a healthy process. Claims of extraterrestrial life, however subtle, demand the highest level of proof. And the disagreements here are helping refine the tools and frameworks used to evaluate future biosignature claims. 
Even with the uncertainties, K2-18b remains one of the most compelling exoplanets studied so far. Its size, location in the habitable zone, and atmospheric chemistry make it a key testing ground for what astronomers call the biosignature framework. This framework recognizes that no single molecule will confirm life. Instead, it emphasizes the importance of detecting multiple, co-occurring indicators that together paint a consistent biological picture. For example, the combination of methane, carbon dioxide, and a sulfur-based molecule like DMS might be more meaningful than any one molecule alone, if seen repeatedly and under conditions that rule out non-biological sources. What the K218b case shows is how close we are to refining that process. While DMS may not have held up under scrutiny, the detection of methane and carbon dioxide remains solid, pointing to a planet with rich, dynamic chemistry. That alone is worth studying further. The road ahead includes more telescope time. Teams have proposed using JWST's instruments, especially the mid-infrared instrument, MIRI, to gather longer and deeper observations of K218b's atmosphere. Extended exposures could reduce noise and improve signal detection, helping scientists better determine whether specific molecules are truly present. Beyond JWST, upcoming missions like ESA's Aerial Telescope, set to launch in 2028, will offer advanced tools for atmospheric characterization. Ground-based observatories like the Extremely Large Telescope in Chile will also contribute to exoplanet analysis with unprecedented resolution. Perhaps most importantly, this case has highlighted the need for collaboration across fields. Understanding a biosignature doesn't just involve astronomy, it also draws on biology, chemistry, planetary science, and even philosophy. The search for life is no longer speculative, it's becoming a rigorous, interdisciplinary science. So 2-18b hasn't given us the answer to whether we're alone, but it's made the question feel more tangible, and that may be its most important contribution so far. K2-18b didn't reveal life, but it brought us closer to understanding how we might one day confirm it. The road is long and filled with uncertainty, but also full of promise. Planets like this one keep us questioning, refining, and reaching farther into the cosmos. And maybe, just maybe, one of them will answer us back. See you next time.